Okay, so <clears throat> we're looking at problem number 44 from page 317 in your book. This is section 5.1. And we haven't done one like this, so I wanted to, uh, to do this. So we have sine over 1 minus secant. And I'm just not putting in the x so that I can uh, not have to write as much. <clears throat> so a couple of things that we can do here. Uh, we can deal with uh, the denominator uh, as it is, or we can go to sines and cosines. I'm going to go to sines and cosines for this one. So it becomes sine over 1 minus 1 over cosine. Get a common denominator, sine over cosine over cosine minus 1 over cosine. Come back up here, sine over cosine minus 1 over cosine. <clears throat> get rid of the compound fracture, fraction, and you get sine cosine over cosine minus 1. Okay, whenever you have a trig function plus or minus 1 in the denominator, you're going to need to multiply by the conjugate. So we're going to multiply by cosine plus 1, the numerator and denominator. So you end up with sine cosine, cosine plus 1, all over cosine squared minus 1. Let's go off to the side. Anytime you have a trig function squared plus or minus 1, you're going to have some version of sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if you want cosine squared minus 1, cosine squared minus 1 is going to equal minus sine squared. Bring the sine over, bring the 1 over, and that's what you get. So now we have sine, cosine, cosine plus 1, all over negative sine squared. <clears throat> Cancel out the sines, and you get cosine, cosine plus 1, all over negative sine. Cosine over sine is cotangent, so it's negative cotangent cosine plus 1. So as you're looking at that, you started with sine over 1 minus secant, and you simplified it to negative cotangent times cosine plus 1.